What's up guys? In this video, I'm going to discuss how Binance pulled out of a potential deal to buy FTX. So first, I'm going to try to summarize this situation, talk about the prices, and then moving forward here and putting a trigger warning on this video because I might say some crazy stuff. Okay, so basically what happened is Binance started to liquidate the native token of the FTX exchange called FTT after I guess seeing that there was a bank run going on, lots of withdrawals, because FTX reported, oh, uh, we're having issues with, uh, with uh, withdrawing, banks are slow, it's Sunday, <laughs> fucking ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, bro, we know banks are closed on Sunday, everybody knows that. And it acts like that's an excuse for why you can't process crypto withdrawals or <laughs> ridiculous. Anyways, um, they saw this and Binance, publicly started saying we're going to liquidate it we're going to just going to sell it all and the other ftx boldly stepped up and claiming oh we'll just buy it and saying oh we might we might dump our bnb which is binance's native token um well it turns out um ftx was the emperor of no clothes because the ftt token ftt token dumped 85 percent over 48 hours so on the november 7th it was around 20 bucks as of recording it's sitting around three today's the 10th of november <laughs> so um and bnb still sitting around 270 or whatever which you know everything's dumping right now but we're, we'll get into that so what's happened is um you know binance ceo cz and ftx ceo sam bankman fried had a bit of a spat on twitter but it turns out cz actually had powder gunpowder and uh sbf didn't have anything because now ftx looks like they're insolvent um they're having issues doing withdrawals and i guess they had a conversation to talk to bro it out crypto bro it out and uh cz said oh okay you guys are distressed we're looking into buying you so they had a loi letter letter of intent to potentially buy ftx about 24 hours later, which was yesterday. So this all happened on election day, Tuesday, November 8th. The next day, November 9th, CZ came out and Binance came out and said, actually, after looking at y'all's bucks, we can't buy this shit. So uh, I'll, I'll put links to the to the tweets and the articles in the, video, in the description so you guys can see it um, without my color commentary. But anyways, uh, so they didn't do that. After that, crypto took an even bigger dump BTC got down to as low as 15k. Solana, future of finance coin, leading the leading the dump down to $12. Um, some of these other tokens that were held by this sister research fund of FTX called Alameda, those are just getting dumped on. I mean, they're just getting just crushed, right? So um, basically, that's what's happening, right? So. FTT is insolvent. They're trying to get rid of everything they have. We saw this play out exactly in May of uh, this year with uh, Three Arrows Capital, where they were literally liquidating dust to get as many pennies, like looking under the cushion of the couch to find them pennies to pay the debtor. I mean, just crazy stuff, man. And, you know, SBF, this guy, he's bribing politicians. He's um, He claimed he was going to give away a billion dollars. I guess he did, just um, not to not destroyed it, right? Not to thin air. Um, he didn't give it away to anybody, but he gave it away to just nothing. Flush it down the toilet. Um, so th it just, this whole situation just highlights how this space is such a fucking joke. I'm sure people are gonna get hurt by this. Again, the guys at the top, I'm sure they'll be fine. They probably have a personal stash somewhere of tether or whatever. But we see how extreme leverage, 4% interest rates, <laughs> Tiny 4% interest rates just are crushing the leverage around all the whole economy, but crypto in particular, because that's how all these guys were functioning. Um, it's just amazing that, you know, this claims of decentralization and, you know, be your own bank and all this nonsense, but all these guys are doing the same stuff. They were just doing leverage derivatives trading, which is pretty much illegal in the US, which is why I think FTX uh, operated primarily overseas. I know they have a U.S. subsidiary that they claim is solvent, but um, actually, based off the reports, that was the factor 
they wanted to include that into the deal. Sorry, FTX US, I think, was the one having problems. Um, uh, one of the ways, either way, FTX US, they, F, they wanted to throw that into the deal with Binance. And reports are saying that that was a factor in them walking away, which I'm not sure if Binance ever intended to buy them. I know they did a LOI. But I was actually listening to George Gammon's Rebel Capitalist live stream the other day, yesterday, and he's more objective because he's not ingrained in this whole stuff like I am. And he thought that they're just buying each other time because what's what's really coming to light is how incestuous all these exchanges are. Right. Alameda and FTX are technically different companies, but they're like sister companies. And you see this these camaraderie or fighting between SBF and CZ on Twitter, and then they're gonna buy them. And, you know, SBF was the same, Sam Beckman Freed was the same guy that claimed he was gonna buy all the insolvent exchanges back in the summer, which that didn't turn out too well, did it? And so it's you see that all, all these guys, and then if this was a real market, we should only be seeing FTT coin, Solana, which is held by the Alameda and FTX, uh, Aptos, Ape. I'll link to a tweet that says the, those are, these are some of the primary coins that Alameda held on their balance sheet. Those are the ones leading the dump. So those are the ones getting just sold, market sold. Um, Solana, like a ton was unlocked from staking, like 50 million or something. It's just craziness, right? You should see those dumping and you shouldn't see everything else. But the thing is, everything's dumping, which it means that just it, it's, it's kind of a microcosm of how incestuous all these crypto companies are, where, which is to give this illusion of decentralization to confuse the retail man to thinking they're part of something new, when in reality, it's, there's nothing new under the sun, and they're just buying into a Ponzi scheme so they can get fucking crushed by these rich sociopaths who just want to leverage this new tech to make themselves, enrich themselves as much as possible and get away with basically murder. Um it's just it's it's crazy man so um all these other stories are coming out about about sbf about how he was sketchy i was always skeptical of him simply because you know he's coming out talking about he's going to give away money ftx seemed like to me they popped out of nowhere i mean i knew about binance cracking coinbase right but they just seemed like they just came out of nowhere and you know they were one of the big beneficiaries of tether right they were the i think the second largest tether trading uh volume next to Binance, which crazy how that works out. You turn off the printer and what happens? Oh, there's no more money, right? Um, with this, uh, one of these VC funds, Sequoia, I don't know much about them, but I just read an article. They said they make they they had stake in FTX. Um, they said they marked it, that, that asset in their portfolio to zero. So, um, and FTX is def desperately seeking to raise funds. I don't know who the hell is gonna give them funds if Binance wouldn't do it. Um, you know, I don't know who's going to do it. So, you know, crypto prices did recover yesterday after a massive dump. Like I said, BTC 15K, uh, BSV got down to $34, <laughs> FTT3, uh, Solana 12, unbelievable, man. Um, they rebounded a bit, maybe, you know, 10% off the lows. But um, I, I would, you know, I don't know what's going to happen with the prices, not financial advice, but it looks like we're going to have continued dumping here. Um so we'll see. It'll be it'll be fascinating to watch this play out. Um, so I want to go back to the point about CZ and SBF making this deal. I said I did a video in the summer where I kind of gave pre predictions for the um, latter part of the year. This was during kind of the drama back then with you know uh, what was it uh, Luna and Terra and all that stuff. What I said was, if I was running a Ponzi scheme, which I think 99.9% .9 of crypto is, I would, and I knew it was a Ponzi scheme, and I knew that it was going to collapse, meaning if I was the guys at the top, like CZ and SBF, I would use delay tactics for as long as possible so I can make sure I get out before uh, the dumping commences, right? That's what I feel, and based off what Gammon said, who's really objective, he came to that conclusion on his own, where he theorized that CZ never intended to buy. He just put that out there to give more time, right? Because when he said that, the markets kind of paused, right? You had about 24 hours without dumping. But as after that time elapsed, that's when the real dump started commencing. So 
um it's it's not good man i mean um at least if you're a crypto person crypto in it for you know prices i mean this is straight pound town and you know what i'm starting to realize is that it i've said it before but it really is going to indicate what which of these coins has some actual usage right um you know of course i'm going to sound like a shill here during all this carnage but the reality is man when i look at something like solana or near or ape coin the fuck when i look at these i don't see a floor and of course i'm biased right but i don't know what that floor is for bitcoin sv which is which is bitcoin but there is a floor there and maybe it's a penny maybe it's half a penny but there's a floor because there's demand there's people actually using it every day not just to hope that number goes up i most people do hope that 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 is the case but there is a floor so you know i always look at this dumping with awe right i mean it's just you know i don't know anyone personally who's getting hurt i'm sure people are but folks got to take responsibility but um uh, you know Jesse Powell actually, you know, I think he's kind of a hypocrite, but I think he had a pretty good thread about this. But, you know, it's easy to say that type of shit after the, after the damage is done, right? Um, you know, be the white knight, you know, our shit don't stink, which, you know, we're going to see about that. Um, with the, speaking of that, with the Teller thing out, you know, and CZ doing this LOI thing, they might, I mean, he already had actually admitted in the letter he sent to his employees that uh, I'll try to find the tweet and link to that. Where he said that this isn't, you know, because people were theorizing that he was trying to do a hostile takeover of FTX. But um, he actually admitted that this is bad and this is going to hurt us because it destroys credibility. Ah, uh, you think? Right? Of course. Of course it does. Um, so, you know, there's going to be more stuff coming out, more ridiculous stories. Just expect more delay tactics. So that's one I woke up to this morning. Uh, Justin Sun. <laughs> which is you know he he his his shit don't stink at all i mean he's clean right he's he's working on a solution this is like the uh you know deploying capital steady lads type thing i mean all this stuff man i'm telling you guys i think it's just we're just trying to prevent like they just want the red candles control what is it controlled like I, there's a term for it, but they want controlled selling. They don't want uncontrolled just dumping like what we saw uh, yesterday afternoon because that's just unpredictable, right? Um, and you know, there's no more tether printer. I, I did see that supply rose a bit, like 300 million uh, yesterday or the day before, which did pause the market. So we'll, be see, we'll see if they're gonna do it because they're desperate, right? But um, I mean, it's just, you know, it, it's, it's just wild, man. And expect more stuff to come out about how incestuous, how the emperor had no clothes, how they didn't have anything. I mean, you know, it's amazing. You can say you're a billionaire based off these illiquid tokens, but you know, when you when people start dumping them, that's a different story. So to explain that, I think people really don't grasp this. When folks peddle the fact that oh, it's a trillion dollar market cap. There is not close to that money in this crypto shit, man. Because all these guys are using derivatives and the the, the market cap is a false, false number that is just simply the price, spot price of a token times the supply. But that implies that everyone with, who owns that token that's part of that supply can actually get that price, which we know is not true, right? Because they started dumping 50 million Solana yesterday or unlocked it and started selling and that crashed the price 50% over a course of 48 hours. So like someone, I saw a tweet saying that, um, you know, 10 billion of sales of these tokens could crash, could completely eviscerate the market. And someone's like, how could a trillion dollar industry be wiped out by 10 billion? It's like, <laughs> you, that's where you reply, few. That's it, right? Like, because it can, because it's, none of this stuff actually has that prices with a decent amount of volume because it's all like, all these guys, they're running these centralized exchanges, right? They control the order books. They're unregulated. They're not like Fidelity, TD Ameritrade, New York Stock Exchange. They're not like these guys that have hawks on them at all times. They control the order books. I don't, I don't know if this is happening for sure, but if you've been in this space for a while and you've seen these dumps, these huge green candles, red candles at different times, 
the incentives for these guys being able to see into the order books of their exchanges, the, the man, amount of manipulation and control that could happen, right? You could basically just counter trade anyone on your exchange. If you see, oh, okay, lots of people are going to long BTC and you see it, you're the first one because you're the exchange owner. You can just take the other side and then um, wipe them out, right? Because why? Because you got the tether printer. You just get a fresh injection of tether and you got the liquidity yourself and you, you're you you're the top player on the board with, uh, you know, control P and you can just, you can just dominate. You just clear all the, clear all the uh, pieces off the board every time you want to. And, you know, you look at these market movements and it kind of reflects something like that. And, you know, frankly, I'm glad, in my opinion, the SBF getting what he deserved. FTX, they're getting what they deserve. Miami uh, Heat Stadium, you guys need to do something. You need to change your fucking logo because, you know, same shit happened with Enron. People didn't think it, it, it could happen, right? They, I think they were on the Houston Oilers, which is football team back in the 90s. You know, people thought, oh, there's no way, right? Uh, FTX Stadium, Miami Heat, NBA team, one of the 30 NBA teams. Such an embarrassment, man. And, you know, yeah, they need to put like a towel over it and just call themselves Miami Heat Stadium or something. All right. Um, I think that's where I want to end it. Um, it's just craziness, man. Um, yeah. So we'll see if there's a rebound, dead cat bounce here um, or, you know, dying cat bounce. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I just, yeah. That's all I got to say. Let me know a feedback. I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.